Uh, I'm here with Maggie. Maggie uh, likes to get in the kitchen and she likes to steal food. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can teach your dog to leave the uh, kitchen and how to stay out of the kitchen when you're either preparing food or eating. Now, um, we're gonna use a lot of positive reinforcement for this, and we're gonna use a, a keyword of landing. Landing is gonna to mean to, to go on this side of an imaginary line that's going right here. Now, when we're doing this, um, first I'm gonna do this in a couple, a couple steps. First thing I'm gonna do is we wanna assign the cue of leaving the room. And you don't wanna say a cue or a command word unless you're 90% certain the dog's gonna do it. I'm gonna achieve this by throwing treats, so I'm pretty sure that Maggie is gonna leave the room when I throw the treat. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have uh, our camera woman, Claire, go ahead and take a couple steps back so she has a little bit better angle. And luckily Maggie is a very treat motivated dog. So what I'm gonna do is put in context leaving the area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say out. So when you say a cue, you wanna say the cue, the dog does the action, gets a reward. I'm gonna go and invite her back in here. Out. And I just want her to go about two or three feet. I want all of her feet outside of here. Now, for this one, I would probably, this would be an exercise to have the kids do. Grab a bunch of treats, come over here. So it comes in, out, and then you throw the treat. She vacates it. You could say your marker word of yes when she gets it. You don't have to for this one because I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to I'm going to do this out about 10 or 15 times. And then I would have you do it the next time, you do it the next time, so she just gets used to. So now at first, I'm luring her. I'm saying out, and then throwing the treat and giving her the motivation to leave. Eventually, I would be able to say, come here. We're not there yet, but I'd be able to say out, and then she would go out, and then I would say yes, and then give her the treat. So right now we're using the treat to motivate her to go. Eventually, after we do this enough practice, you should be able to say out, and then she leaves, then we say yes, and then we come over and pay her for leaving. So now we've established a cue, so if you're in here cooking, and you see that she's here, you say out, she goes out. Now, it'd be nice if we go over and give her a treat each time, but maybe one of your helpers goes, grabs a treat and goes and gives it to her. Uh, but the idea when we're practicing this, there's no food. Nobody's eating, nobody's cooking. That makes it way, way too hard. You practice this in the easiest version possible, which is what we're doing right now. All right, so once we've established that, we need to find out where the boundary is. Now the boundary, like I said, is gonna be here. I would recommend the guardians get some painter's tape. Put your painter's tape from here. Um, when you're using a painter's tape, take an X-Acto knife and go on the roll and zip it a little bit. So the idea is you put it down for a week. After a week, you have these little dashes. You can peel each other one up. And you do that for the next week, and the next week you peel every other one up, and gradually this thing disappears, but the dog practices this particular behavior, so they're happy to stay out. All right, uh, and they know where the line is, I should say. All right, so I'm gonna say out, and she goes out. And I'm doing this just to position her. Sit, landing. Now, if I want her to go uh, to use this as a landing, as the cue, landing. Yes. And I could even just do it where I'm throwing the treats um, and saying landing as I throw the treat, but I don't know exactly where the treat's gonna go. So I'll probably just go landing. Yes. And give her that treat. So after enough, so for the two things I want you guys to practice with about 20 treats, just throwing the treat, saying out as you throw the treat and she runs out. This is just to create an out cue. And once you can say out and she leaves and then you go give her the treat afterwards, then we're ready for the landing. And then you would do the same similar principle, but now we'd be a little bit more specific. Landing needs to sit right here. Instead of throwing the tree, you would say out, landing, and give her that treat. So you, again, you want the word to happen, then she sits, and then you say yes and give her the treat. All right, so now when I go in the kitchen, now it's gonna be, I'm gonna make this a little bit harder, or it's gonna be a little bit easier because I'm not the guardians. So I take a step back, and I come and give her a treat. I take two steps back, I come back and I give her a treat. Now, right now there's no food in here, so it's easy for her to stay here. What we're doing is helping her practice establish a good behavior. And when I'm doing it, I'm, not, I'm moving pretty casually. Um, I was just training one of our guys, Jacob, today, and when he was doing this, he would go like this. That's not how we normally move. Just move in a casual format. And let's say that I, and I'm gonna sh do a practice fail just to show you. So let's say that I do this and she comes in. I'm not going to punish. I'm not going to get upset about it. Now, I dropped a treat there to lure her to do this. When you're doing this and she just comes in on her own, that means we just ask for a little more criteria. So we say landing. Yes. And then if I was two steps when she came in, I would just go one step and then go back to her. So we're always going to back up to an easier level, a level where she was successful, practice that one two or three times, then try to go to that harder level again. 
So this is gonna probably take multiple practice sessions. At first, you're just gonna walk in, one step, two step, three steps. Eventually, you're gonna walk in, open the refrigerator, close the refrigerator, come back, give her that, say yes, and give her that treat. So we're saying yes at the conclusion of her waiting, essentially. Then after, get to the point where I can open the fridge, look at the fridge, sit here for a minute, she stays there, come back, yes, give her that treat. Eventually, I wanna go open the fridge, take out a piece of, uh, my, uh, piece of uh, lunch meat, put it on the counter. She stays there, I come back over her, give her the treat. Say yes and give her the treat. Go back over there, open the lunch meat. Don't take out that, just open it. Now the smell is a little bit stronger. Come back over here and give her the treat. So we're working her up. Once I get to the point where I can take it out, then the next step is I would, I would microwave it. Smell is a big thing for dogs. So I microwave a piece of roast beef. Now I have the smell and the boundary and the person's walking away. That's multiple things. So this is something you're gonna to have to work up to. So again, you, you microwave it, then you put it either here or here, and you come back to her and give her the treat. We're not actually eating at the table, but it smells like we're simulating, we're doing a dress rehearsal. So eventually you get to the point where you have somebody sit down right here. And uh, maybe they're cutting the roast beef into little pieces. And somebody else is coming over here and give her the treat. Or the person here, you could come, I could sit down, cut a piece, put my knife down, come back over here, give her a treat. And for her, there's no reason for her to want to come in here because she never gets any people food. When you're doing this, never give your dog food from the table. That will trigger and cause them to come in here. What I'm doing is just saying, if you stay here, you're gonna get a treat. And at first it's one step, two step, then eventually the refrigerator, then opening the lunch meat, and then microwaving the lunch meat. So we're gonna go very progressive until she uh, is able to stay for long periods of time. Now she's right here. This is all doing it in one setting. So that's why, are you gonna figure this one out? So right now, this is not, ex I wouldn't expect her to respect the boundary because we just started this. Now I'm gonna reward her as soon as she SITs. Now, so the first stage is just walking in your kitchen. And when you walk in your kitchen, give yourself a glass of water. Open the fridge, open the microwave, open your drawers, simulate the things you're gonna do in the kitchen. Eventually you open it, you take the, some stuff out, put it on the counter, eventually you're taking the lunch meat out, eventually you're microwaving the lunch meat, you're putting it there. The, next, the last step, or not last step, but because uh, every dog's unique, is I would actually maybe have the kids sit here and eat a meal. So we only do this when she's been previously successful. Microwave the piece of roast beef and put it right there and give the kids a sandwich or whatever. They don't have to have the roast beef. But then she's gonna sit there. At first she sits there for one second, they take a bite, comes over, gives a treat. She doesn't have to sit. She can just, all I care is she's on this side of the line. And eventually maybe they take two bites and then I come over. Eventually we're eating our whole meal. Then we're coming and rewarding the dog at the end of the, at the conclusion of that. We're saying yes and give her the treat. Now, this is gonna be things that I would practice at different times of the day. I would also microwave different things. Microwave some tacos one time or some chicken next time. So all the different smells that you get used to. Um, if you bake or whatever you do, simulate all those things as much as you can to help her practice just staying right here. Now, uh, let me see. Sit. Yes. Um, okay, so um, when you're doing this, it'll help if you exercise her a little bit before uh, you actually, uh, before you do this, just to set her up for success. Also, you don't want to have like somebody up here eating Cheetos or other distractions. Eventually, we want to get to the point where we're eating Cheetos, we're dropping stuff on the floor, and she's staying out of the kitchen because it doesn't matter if it's on the floor or on the table or on the counter. This is what I need to do to sit here to get these treats. Now, this is going to take some, some practice. So I would expect like it's going to take you, if you're practicing about two or three times a day, it's probably going to take about a week or so before you get to the point where you eat a meal and she's staying there voluntarily. And if she fails, remember, it's not something we want to get upset about. We're just going to basically just, okay, I asked for a little bit more criteria too early. We're going to, what is the easier step? We're going to back up one or two steps, practice that one two or three times, and then work our way back to the original level. Um, and if she actually does what she's going to do right now, that's a wonderful indicator. She's not only uh, laying down, she's laying down sideways. This is confrontational, this is sideways. She's also doing what I call side saddle. She's sitting at her hips. I look at how many moves the dog has to get to get up to come and challenge. The only thing she can do more is turn her and face that way and be on her side or on her back to say, I'm not, I'm not interested in coming in there. All right, um, you wanna come in and we'll sign this one off. Come. Yes. Well, this handsome girl is Maggie, and this is how you can teach a dog to stay out of your kitchen using positive reinforcement.